literary adaptations are super hot right now. You have the wildly successful Bridgerton, Queen's Gambit, as well as The Witcher on screen over at Netflix. You have Frank Herbert's Dune coming to the screen thanks to Denis Villeneuve. You have Isaac Asimov's Foundation over at Apple, and you have Amazon's billion dollar bet for a single season of Lord of the Rings. And if we're talking billions of dollars, you've got Reese Witherspoon, who recently sold her company Hello Sunshine for $900 million. Reese has proven very adept at choosing literary fiction that people want to read, or at least drawing attention to those particular books, but she's also proven very skilled at bringing books to the screen. You have Leanne Morty's Big Little Lies, which I loved, brought to the screen, not to mention Celeste Ng's Little Fires Everywhere. And so you're seeing a lot of people looking for more literary content. You're seeing production deals accompany book deals. There's an article in The Atlantic that talks about the 125 literary to screen adaptations in the works right now. It also tries to pick apart what makes for good literary adaptations. Folks are looking for episodic plots, a large ensemble cast, and massive world building. They want to follow a cast of characters over a series of episodes, really get invested. Think uh, Game of Thrones. And the massive world building, well, that's traditionally been the realm of fantasy and sci-fi, but you can do a lot with historical fiction. Think Underground Railroad. So it gets me thinking, what's left? What books deserve some sort of screen or movie adaptation? And of course, I'm realizing this is probably better served as a tag video where I ask a series of questions like, uh, what's the book that you would convert into a movie? What's the book that you would convert into a prestige season on Netflix? What's the book or series that you would convert to episodic series over on cable TV? And what's the book that you would adapt and throw over to Sony Animation or Pixar to turn into a movie? You've got the Chris's. Chris Evans, Chris Helmsworth, and Chris Pine. What's the book you give them? And for the women, you've got Fran Drescher, Catherine Zeta-Jones, Megan Mullally, and Angela Bassett. What is the book that you give them? That is actually a trick question. You get them to reboot Golden Girls. Those women are actually the exact same age as the original Golden Girls were when the show premiered in 1985. I know, crazy. Anyway, let's get to some bookish adaptations that I'd like to see. The obvious choice, the center square in our literary adaptation bingo card is of course Brian K. Vaughn's Saga. It is an epic space opera meets Romeo and Juliet. You've got competing assassins, a tree ship, a disemboweled babysitter, magic, um, a guy with a TV forehead, lion cat. I mean, it's got it all. Like, give it a Mandalorian style budget and you've got a bona fide hit on your hands. Now, granted, there are a few problems, I suppose. First off is that Brian K. Vaughan is only halfway through his 108 episode series right now. He's taken a bit of a hiatus. Actually, he's taken a hiatus since 2018, so he really needs to get on that. And you really don't want to get yourself into a Game of Thrones type situation where the TV show ends before the actual book is finished. And Brian K. Vaughan is arguably a little busy. His earlier works, Why the Last Man, is actually being released shortly over on FX. And the equally fantastic Paper Girls is currently in production, so maybe we'll cut him a little bit of slack. Sticking with comics, I would love to see a movie version of Justice League and not the grim Dark Snyderverse beast of a movie that was just released. I mean, maybe DC could for once release a movie that was shot in the daylight or indoors in reasonable lighting. The Justice League I'm thinking about is based on the 1987 series run that was written by Keith Geffen, J.M. DeMontis, and illustrated by the king of facial expressions, Kevin Maguire. This is basically a Justice League headed up by Batman and incorporating a bunch of B and C list heroes. You've got the bowl cut having narcissistic psychopath Guy Gardner, which is essentially what you get when you give a mega hat wearing Florida man a Green Lantern ring. You have the Martian Manhunter, defined by his crippling addiction to Oreos. You have Captain Marvel, which is 14-year-old Billy Batson stuck in this adult, you know, hero's body trying to interact with these other superheroes. You have Booster Gold and Blue Beetle, which are essentially Beavis and Butthead in skin-tight spandex. The series, for its 60-episode run, is rounded out by a bunch of other characters like Dr. Light, Dr. Fate, uh, Fire and Ice, Mr. Miracle, Black Canary. Anyway, it's a hilarious run, one of my most favorite series runs in comics. This is something that you give to Dan Harmon. You finally give him a movie. This is Community with Superpowers. Maybe give it to James Gunn if you can rein in the dick jokes and gore, because this is less about the big CGI fight at the end of The Big Boss and more about the sort of dysfunctional infighting that happens 
between all of these superheroes. I think this would be fantastic on screen. Literary adaptations have already harvested the big, big books. Your Alex Cross, your Jack Reachers, your Lord of the Rings, your Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. So production companies are increasingly looking at less well-known, but still pretty buzzy books. I mean, if you go look at Goodreads reviews, Sarah Perry's The Essex Serpent has about 50,000 reviews, along with um, Taffy Brodesser Ackner's fantastic Fleischman's in Trouble. Down at 30,000 review, you have Charlie Yu's uh, Interior Chinatown, 30,000, despite winning the National Book Award. Marlon James' Brief History of Seven Killings, also at around 30,000 reviews, all of these being turned into TV or movie series. But we can go further down the list. Don Winslow, A Cool Breeze Underground, has only 2,000 reviews. And The Eagles of Newark, 22. All of this to say that we can go a little deeper down and find some hidden gems, things that other people may have missed as far as books go, but still just as worthy for a TV or movie adaptation. And to that, I add Madeline Ashby's Company Town. Sitting at only 5,000 reviews, this is a fantastic Canadian sci-fi read that I loved. Features Hua, which is a Korean newfie who works as a bodyguard for the sex workers union in sort of a housing area that's built on an oil rig off the coast of Newfoundland in some cybernetic future. Hua's unique gift is the fact that she has zero cybernetic enhancements, which renders her completely unhackable. So you've got murder and intrigue, romance, humor, all of that. And great, I think this would make for a fantastic uh, adaptation. But what you do is you bring Madeline Ashby on board, not only to advise against the script, but because she works full-time as a futurist. She gets paid to build frameworks around the future and think about the future for organizations like Intel and the World Health Organization. So she's done a dissertation on border security. She wonders what smart cities might look like or immigration in the future. So you get that sort of thinking in the show and the ramifications of all the future technology being used. It's more than just about flying cars. It's about notions of privacy in a connected universe. Um, what does a robot social network look like? That sort of thing. I think it would be really, really interesting. So you've got like a Newfie Westworld with a Korean lead. That sounds like a slam dunk. Sticking with Koreans, I'm thinking of something that I would send over to Netflix Korea. Shoot in Korean. I'm okay with subtitles. This is Unsu Kim's The Plotters. And this is essentially a Korean John Wick. Could even exist in the John Wick universe, where in John Wick you have the Continental. Here in Korea, it is called the Library. And that's where we're introduced to our character, Rezeng. He is raised in this world of old world assassins quietly working with the government. But there's some fierce competition coming up. There's the anything for a buck, dirty deeds done dirt cheap of the meat market, as well as the MBA led corporatization of killing headed up by a character named Hunja, who I see here being played by Stephen Yun. So Rezang torn between all of these worlds and he's got to make some sort of a decision. Like honestly, killing is this big business and competition is fierce. And it's filled out with this weird host of characters like the guy who runs the pet crematorium that disposes of bodies on the side. You've got the ex-soldier turned barber. You have the character named Old Raccoon who raises Rezang in the library and this whole host of really strange plotters. A great story, lots of violence. I think this would make for a fantastic single series on Netflix. One last quick one, Max Berry's Lexicon, which I really enjoyed. It is about these individuals that have learned to hack the linguistic centers of the human mind to bypass our you know, natural defenses and access our human OS to make us compliant to command with a string of words. They're trained in a place called the organization and graduate to become what they call poets. These poets can actually coerce and you know, compel people to do things. Anyway, there's competing factions of poets that are converging this place in Australia for this cataclysmic Tower of Babel type event that will render all language meaningless. The story itself really runs along and it is fantastic. Bit of a weak ending, but I still think there's a fantastic conceit here that you could really mine for a series. Anyway, that is about it. This turned out to be way more difficult than I thought it would be, not for any lack of source material, but it seemed like every book that I thought of is already being made into a TV series. You've got Joe Ide's fantastic IQ series that features Isaiah Kintabe, who is an African-American Sherlock Holmes working Long Beach, California, 
already picked up by Snoop Dogg. You have Marlon James' Black Leopard, Red Wolf, which was a tough slog of a read, but I thought would make a fantastic TV series. Already picked up by Michael B. Jordan. You have Charles Yu, National Book Award winning Interior Chinatown, which was kind of a clunky read, but I thought would be absolutely genius on the screen and helped in no small part by the fact that Charles Yu himself writes for Westworld, picked up by Hulu. Madeline Miller's Circe, fantastic read that I loved, HBO Max. James McBride, Deacon King Kong, which I thought was sort of a rosy eyes reminiscent of McBride's growing up in the Red Hook housing projects in Brooklyn that feels like a Spielberg movie already. TV adaptation on the way. Even our book club on Discord, we are reading Grady Hendrix, The Final Girls Support Group. The ink is barely dry on the book and it's already being optioned in production with Charlize Theron attached. And over at The Office, our work book club pick, Bad Blood by John Carreyrou, which is following the rise and fall of Theranos, the trial for the Theranos CEO, Elizabeth Holmes, is currently underway, has Adam McKay of Big Short fame attached to direct with Jennifer Lawrence set to play the turtleneck-wearing, deep-voiced CEO, Elizabeth Holmes, which I think is going to be fantastic. So there's a ton of stuff out there, and it was actually tough to find stuff that isn't already snatched up for literary adaptation. Okay, that's it for me this week. In the meantime, let me know if there's a book, graphic novel, comic run that you would love to see adapted for the screen that isn't actually currently in production to be adapted on the screen. Easier said than done. Also, tell me who you would cast Megan Mullally, Angela Bassett, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and Fran Drescher in if it wasn't the Golden Girls. Anyway, that's it. Hope you all have a great week of reading this week, and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye.